the first geothermal power plant in the United Kingdom is being built. In addition to that, the sleepy geothermal market of Italy has started to wake up. Also, what even is a geothermal well? You probably think you know the answer, but you might be proven wrong. These are the topics for today. Welcome. Welcome everyone to What's Heating Up, our GeoTV segment where we cover the latest news, trends and insights within the geothermal industry. And speaking of staying on top of geothermal news, who better to join us than someone who literally lives and breathes it every day? That's right. Welcome Carlo Cariaga, Editor-in-Chief of Think Geo Energy, the go-to place for everything geothermal. Hi Bull, hi Gabriella. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here and I'm really looking forward to talking about those geothermal stories you mentioned. Thank you, Carlo, for being here. We're so excited. And um, I want to get straight into it. The United Kingdom is building its first ever geothermal power plant. Please tell us more about this. OK, so the project you're talking about is the United Downs Deep Geothermal Power Project being developed by Geothermal Engineering Limited. This is in Cornwall. So it's going to be a 2 to 3 megawatt net uh, binary geothermal power plant. Uh, it, it has a production well. I, I mean, it, it's producing from a 5,000 meter production well. It also has a one of injection well. And there are also plans to produce lithium from the brine from this project. Great project. But uh, so is this really the first deep geothermal project in the UK? Well, it's technically the first deep geothermal power plant in the UK. But then the UK also, also has a very extensive history of geothermal exploration and utilization. It also has a very diverse ecosystem of geothermal applications. So it ha right now it has more than 40,000 shallow geothermal heat pump installations. It also has, uh, it's also gotten into uh, mine water heating schemes. This is, it already has an operating scheme in uh, Gateshead. And there's also another deep geothermal heating project called Eden Geothermal. This is providing heat to the Eden biomes or the Eden project. So this is mostly for, um, for commercial installations and agriculture. Hmm. So this is definitely not a virgin market, but the first power plant. Let's celebrate that. Meanwhile, in another corner of Europe, a dinosaur seems to have awakened, right? That's right. Not really a dinosaur, though, but in some sense as well. Uh, we're talking about the geothermal market of Italy, which hmm. has been around for a long time. The first ever geothermal power plant was commissioned in Lardrello in 1913. That's a long time ago. And that's a proud legacy. And finally, after a decade or so of, you know, more or less a total standstill, something is happening. Can you tell us more, Carlo? Well, one of the major positive developments for the Italian geothermal market is that the concessions for the geothermal power projects of NL Green Power, this is a state-owned geothermal power developer and operator, they operate more than 30 power plants in the Tuscany region. So this, their concessions have been extended to 2046. So as you can imagine, this, this helps facilitate investment and growth plans for, the, for their uh, future power project. And I think they now have two to three power plants planned to be operational until 2030. But is it only the fact that these concessions were extended? Is that the only sign we have of something moving? Well, the unfortunate thing about the history of Italian, the Italian geothermal sector is that they have not had a new power plant online since 2014. And this is mainly due to the lack of uh, an incentive or tariff scheme that applies to geothermal. And this happened when the Fair One decree uh, was enacted in 2017. Uh, the, the, it completely dropped support for geothermal power projects. But then the Fair Two decree, which is uh, the updated version of the Fair One, came into power in um, late 2024. And this finally provided this incentive scheme for geothermal power. And now they also, uh, they're also they also deliberating another, another ministerial decree that will provide more incentives for all, now for geothermal heating projects. Thanks for summarizing that, Carlo. Uh, let's hope the momentum keeps building. Uh, Italy could surely be a game changer for Europe if, uh, if the market takes off again. Now I'm curious, Buell, do you know what a geothermal well is? It feels like a trick question, and I'm not even sure I should answer this, <laughs> but hey, 
Well, a well is a well. It's a hole in the ground. It's where you harness the geothermal heat, right? Have, do I have to leave the studio now? <laughs> no, you don't. And uh, unfortunately, there isn't really a defined term on uh, what a geothermal well is, nor is there a classification for geothermal wells or drilling operations. Why, why is this a problem, Carlo? Okay, so your question on what a geothermal well is, it's, it's a fantastic question. And it's, it's exactly how the geothermal, the IADC geothermal committee frames their uh, geothermal well classification system. So it seeks to address this question. The IADC, or the International Association of Drilling Contractors, recently f uh, established this geothermal committee that is, I mean, as you can imagine, it's, it's specific to, ge to the geothermal sector. And on the topic of geothermal wells, there are so many ways that we can define a geothermal well. So we have the conventional wells in, say, high temperature regions. You can drill them to like two to three kilometers. And then you have the doublets in Paris. You have the coaxial geothermal wells. You have the uh, advanced closed loop geothermal wells. And so there are so many ways that we can describe what a geothermal well is. And so there now needs to be an international standard that defines all of these parameters. And then we can have a, a sort of international understanding of what a geothermal well is. I think that sounds uh, fantastic. Personally, I have a hard time grasping it uh, myself. But what are the next uh, steps for this project, Carlo? Okay, so the IADC Geothermal Committee has already started working on this sort of complexity calculator or risk index. It sets uh, numerical values for certain well drilling parameters, such as, let's say, is it reservoir dependent? Is it going to be drilled in a rural or a, an urban site? It's, is it going to be used for power or for heat? How deep is the well? What is the geometry of the well? What is the casing program? So these are all parameters that are being considered under this whole system for classification of the risks. And so this provides a very streamlined communication tool that uh, geothermal developers and also drilling contractors can use to communicate the complexities of a geothermal well to say investors or insurance companies or even communities. I think we're all a fan of uh, streamlined things here. Um, yes. But now I'm curious, Carlo and Buell, uh, do you check whether your toilet paper is 100% geothermal? <laughs> no, should we? Are you, Carlo? No, I don't. Uh, there are so many geothermal products nowadays. We have, we have food, we have, say, coffee, but toilet paper is really quite out there. It's, it's a little out of this world, but then there's this company in New Zealand in the Kawerau region called Aciti. Uh, they're a paper manufacturing facility and now they're using geothermal to produce tissue and toilet paper. So this was a project that, that is, uh, it took a few years to make. Uh, it also had a sta uh, substantial investment that went into it. But now they're using 100% geothermal steam for their drying facility in Kawerau. It sounds like New Zealand is on a roll. And that said, it's time to wrap up this episode. <laughs> it sure is. This episode of GeoTV has come to an end. With that said, please join us next time when we'll discover new stories and segments together with you. Until then, remember to take care and stay hot. And always on.